Hi, I'm James Ali Bashir, and you're watching BWTM Live. An issue with amateur boxing, I know it is. It's issue pro, with pro boxing. Well. It's listen, Roy Jones got robbed. <laughs> Floyd Mayweather got robbed. I say to these lot, sometimes you get robbed. It's the way. It's just the way it is. It, I, no one, there's no one person or one organisation that's going to change it. Um, there should be one governing body governing everything. everything, but there's not. So what there's not, you got to do something. Okay. Um, Boxing philosophies. Uh, often you hear in the pro game, fights have to be exciting. They have to be, uh, you know, dynamic. Which usually means fight with your face, <laughs> take a hundred punches, mm. and be anti-boxing. What are your philosophies on this? And if you're told by the promoter, look, you need to start promoting, get some guys out there that are exciting fighters. What do you say? Do you put that kind of pressure in fighters? Uh, I think probably the easiest way to answer that question is I don't really have any boxers that really fight like that. Okay. Um, you know the sort of fighters I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, I teach my fighters to be defensively responsible, responsible. all the time. Um, you're going to get hit. It's just the way it is, especially if you're throwing punches at the same time, it's going to happen. Um, but gen generally, no, be defensively responsible. So I don't really. I don't, I can, it's, I'm in a good position now where I can pick and choose. Yes. Um, and if I feel that my style is not going to help you or benefit you because you can only just come forward. Yeah. I mean, my fighters can fight going forward, fight going back. Um, fight most of them can switch, most of them can fight on the inside. Um, but if it's just a straight come forward brawler, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't take them on. Because I know I can't help them. Because it's not, it's not for me. Even if I know you know, they're very popular and, you know, they've got a big following and a lot of money involved. I know that I can't help them because I, I don't, I'm not comfortable teaching boxing like that. Yeah. Um, unless you're a really, a really good come forward fighter who's tucked up really well. But if it's one that's just give and take sort of thing. Maybe that tough lad, you come forward, you'll give it his best shot. No, I can't. Not me. Daring to be great? Daring to be great and getting knocked out. Mm. Doesn't work for you. No? Yeah. Um, boxing that's on television, I'm sure you do watch a lot of boxing on TV. Mm -hmm. um, how do you get around what you're seeing on television and then what's being said in the commentary being completely opposite to what you're watching? How do you deal with that? That's an easy one. If it irritates me, I'll just put on mute. If I watch a fight and, it's not, and like the commentators have been biased towards one boxer, yeah. um, I'd watch the fight again without any commentary. You know, or to be honest, I can just zone, I can just zero out anyway. A lot of times I'm watching a fight, I'm not really listening to what they're saying. They they don't have an influence on me. Right. When you when you've been studying boxing for as long as I have, I mean, I, I think when I was nine or ten, yeah, um, I started watching boxing, and I went to the extreme. There was no internet or anything like that. Yeah. So we still had Betamax tapes and VHS. That's it. I, I used to record all mine. Yeah. So yes. I, used, I, used to, I used to order mine from America. So I used to do a paper round. I used to do a car wash just so I could get the money. Wow. Because I used to know of these fighters, but I couldn't see them because we didn't have that on TV. Yeah. So there's a guy in America that used to get everything. And it was all right for them because they had it on TV. Yeah. But yeah, I used to have to pay for it. They post it over. And I used to count the days when it was coming. You know, you had to pay for the tape and then the post and so on. But um, yeah, I've been watching it so long, and it was, I think my dad used to think I was mad, because he used to come, he used to leave early in the morning. Yeah. Obviously, he knows I've gone to school, but then when he comes back from work, I'm, st I'm watching the fight that I was watching in the morning, or watching the fight I was watching the whole weekend, because I'd watch it so much that the tape would wear out, and yeah. I'd have to order it again, because I had to stop it, rewind it, stop it, rewind it, and say, well, how is he able to do that? It, it was... And that was before I even met my first coach. I was yeah. obsessive with it. Breaking so, that, yeah. Yeah, I used to really love watching it so much. So the, the commentary to me, 
it doesn't do anything. I mean, I prefer if it's someone like Roy Jones or yes. Malinaji talking. Yeah, um, you know, they would break down fights really well. They seem to under get an understanding of what's going on during the belt. Right. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't get me. Um, hype jobs. <laughs> <laughs> Talk to me about it. Uh, I, hope, I hope no one thinks any of my fighters are hype jobs. <laughs> I hope not. Um, I don't know. I, to be honest, as, as a boxer, yes. Um, it's so it's such a hard sport that you know if that if you have that tag and you've made a lot of money, all respect and praises to you, because there's a lot of guys that are, that might be a lot better than you, but they haven't used any sort of marketing strategy to get in a position where they can make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's how I look at trainers. Um, I know how good I am, but I don't ever knock another trainer because yeah. it, there's so much different ways to teach this sport and I respect everybody's method. Everyone, every, everyone's different. It's just like when I'm, when I'm in education and we might, you know, we might have to get a supply mass teacher yeah. and you'd always get someone different. And obviously I'm going to pop into the classroom and look and see exactly how I'm getting on with the students. And I'll see what he's doing on the board. And it's different to what the last guy did, but the result's the same. And, I say, okay. and I'm watching it and I'm like, oh, I didn't know I had to do it that way, so that's good. Well, I, I know something else now. Yeah. So I always respect how everybody approaches how they teach boxing. Conor McGregor. <laughs> the workout. Mm. I'm sure you saw it. Yeah. Did you see the workout and yeah. all that stuff? Yeah. And the oh, if he catches Floyd with the left hand, yeah. what were your thoughts about all this MMA versus boxing or UFC versus boxing? I think it's great. Really? I think it's great. Some reason is um, it's more interest in our sport. It's not. I don't see any negatives in it whatsoever. Uh, both guys made a lot of money. The people in and around it made a lot of money. Um, so and we paid for it. Paid for it and. Everybody won, and boxing won. So I don't see why anybody would have anything negative to say about the event. It was an event, and that's all it was. We, if you're into boxing, you didn't take it like, oh my god, this is a really, really serious fight. It's not like Triple G or Canelo or anything like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just an event. It's an event. The rise of Triple G. What are your thoughts about Triple G as a fighter? Um, he doesn't do anything for me personally, but. I got a lot of respect for him, especially when I saw him box uh, Jacobs. Okay. Um, because I knew that he was that that's a real live wire. You yeah. know, the guy's got good power, he comes from good pedigree. He's always been always been a good in, he's an industry boxer, he really knows yeah. that he's a very good fighter. And um, the fact that he was, you know, able to still do a lot of things he'd done with some of the other fighters, not yeah. as consistent, mm -hmm. but you know, his jab was still really good. Yeah. You know, um, and when he, he did have a lot of difficulty, especially when Jacobs boxed Southpaw, yes. but he didn't shy away, he still Quite stuck to it. And yeah. to be honest with you, me, if it was a draw, yeah. I'm happy with that. If Jacobs won it by a round, I'm happy with, with that. If Jacobs got it by one round, I'm sorry, I'm Triple G, fine. But he proved that he is an elite fighter. Okay. You know, he beat a lot of guys who I'd never heard of before. Yeah. And you know, people are talking negatively, saying, "Well, you know, he's not beating no one." Okay, fine. We got him a test, and really, you know, it doesn't matter if you think that he won or lost. The fight was that close, yeah. And he proved. was in there, yeah. and he proved to me that he's a league fighter. Anthony Joshua, the talk of the town, mm -hmm. the king of the hill, yeah. the baddest man on the planet. Mm -hmm. So some say. Mm -hmm. The Tyson Fury has a different opinion. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the Joshua phenomenon? funny because um, I'm from Mill Hill and Collingdale and that's where he's originally well he's from I know, I know he's been with Watford before or which one he lives at first but when we used to play football on the Astro turf he was there um, a lot of the guys that he talks about were there so I've known him not close but he was in that circle for a long time and um, you know going to Finchley and then you know doing that when the Olympics He's got two belts. How can you not love what he's doing? And uh, he's a more uh, role model. His fight against Parker, how do you think that goes? I haven't watched that much of Parker. I think I've only seen him box once, but it's heavyweight division. To me, they're all dangerous. Um, interesting fight. He looks fit, Parker. Yeah. So 
Give them three tips, uh, three three major tips for you as a trainer. Three major tips. Um, I would say be organised, because if you're organised, then your box will be organised. Um, I would start with defence. Yeah, be defensively responsible first before as well. Footwork, you know, pivot. That's important. And um, I would say be reliable. You know, if, you, if you're reliable, then obviously, you know, your box will have that trust with you. They know you're going to be there and they'll they want to perform for you. So I'd say that's probably the, the most important. And the guy you most watch in this era? Just retired. That's my boy, Andre Ward. No, not Ward. I'm not going to say they retired. Yeah. Has he retired? Has he actually retired now? Well, he's saying that he's been, he said that after the Madrid fight, that was it. Wow. And I don't, I personally don't think he'll come back, but I would say it's Floyd. Not Ward. I love Ward. Um, but um, Ward does a lot of things like what Floyd does. Yeah. But Floyd does it better. Wow. He's better. It's, I'm talking in all aspects of boxing. It just, um, you can see Ward spend a long time studying Floyd. But so have a lot of fighters. A lot of fighters do a lot of things that Floyd does, but it's just he's there's something different about that guy. It's the way he's able to make adjustments during bouts. Yeah, you see him struggling, the next minute he's doing something completely different, and then the bout looks easy. Um, I don't think any fighter in history ever has been as talented as him. And that's and I love Whitaker. I love Holyfield. What about Ray Robinson? I love Ray Robinson. Uh, Tommy Hearns is one of my favourites. Yeah. Uh, but I don't think they have the boxing brain that this guy has got. And I think that's the difference. Wow, that's a big statement. That's a huge statement. And it's hard because, you know, I've, you know, I've, I've been around a long time, so I've seen a lot of great fighters, loads of great fighters. You know, I love Roy Jones. Uh, Hagler was great. Shigeru Leonard was great. Um, Presumably Nelson. There's too many. Uh, you know, again, Holyfield. Probably yeah. my, Holyfield is my favourite fighter of all time, mm-hmm. but he's not the best. But right. he's my favourite. Yeah. Um, there's too many good ones. Too many. But Floyd, to me, is just a little bit different to the rest. Special. A little bit special. Yeah. Final question. Lomachenko. <laughs> Talk to me about. It. All my boxers, well, a lot of my boxers that are here now, amateur and pro, um, they rave about Lomachenko. Um, I think he's special to them because this is their time and this is their era. Mm-hmm. I've seen what he's doing over and over again. Perno Whitaker was Absolutely. amazing. And a lot of these guys are just, I mean, I think Lomachenko probably could be interviewing, obviously, going to say that they're the kind of guys that he studied. Yeah. But Whitaker was just doing it against everybody, you know, at the highest level he's doing that. And for me, I can't get excited and rate a guy in the pound for pound list who's just only had 10 pro fights. To me, exactly. I think it's a ridiculous statement, especially when you've got guys like Errol Spence and Thurman who are a lot more experienced. Uh, I mean, Thurman holds two belts. I mean, for, for me, he should be rated above him. Again, Triple G mm-hmm. proved himself. Canelo. Um, Canelo's 
fantastic, special. A lot of guys, there's a lot of guys to me that, are, that should be rated above him. I can see him getting there because he's that good. I'm a boy Crawford. Crawford to me at the moment is the pound for pound best boxer in the world. He's, uh, he can do everything. Orthodox, southpaw, he can box inside, outside. To me, he's the closest boxer to Floyd Mayweather. Um, when I saw him box, uh, is it post Postal? Yes. It reminded me of Floyd V. Carlos. I your jab, yeah, I remember that he was kicking apart. He reminded me when I watched Floyd V. Carlos because you, you should know what to do against certain fighters. Yes. So he knew that movement, angles um, was the best approach to that particular opponent. Yeah. And again, he seems to have the boxing brain to fight the right sort of strategy at the right time against the right opponent. Absolutely. So, to close. If somebody wants to come down to your gym, mm -hmm. what do you say to them down the kitchen? <laughs> Sorry. Um, at this moment in time, yeah. don't come. <laughs> You're not welcome. Don't come. Uh, it's just, I've, there's just too many. I've got too many pros at the moment. Okay. Um, you know, I'm excited with what I've got. Um, you know, I've got uh, a few lightweights. I've got Dennis, lights out at home. I've got Jerome Campbell. I've got Yusuf Super Kamari. I've got uh, Yasa, Yassi boy. I've got Tunji, Uncle T. I've just got Kay Prosper. I've just got Kian Thomas. I've got Adrian Redman. I've got Shaquille Johnson. Um, I've just got Ozzy Xavier as well. Yeah. Um, I hope I haven't forgotten anybody because I'm thinking about all the amateurs that are coming through as well. Yeah. Um, what about from the amateur side of things? Um, Have you got space for amateurs? No. I'd say no, because the head coach for the amateurs is actually, I think this will be his last tournament coming up in March, because he got his pro license around the same time as me, um, a couple of years ago, so he will be giving up the amateurs shortly, and um, then I've got um, EJ, who will probably be running the amateurs, uh, along with uh, Adrian and one of my other coaches here. Um, so. I, don't, I personally don't think there's any space. I haven't, I haven't got space to teach any more boxers. Like I said, at this point for me, it would have to be someone who's established. I wouldn't take anyone who's just, you know, fucking looking for their pro debut or anything like that. Not now. I've already had loads of boxers that I've built a foundation with that are going to be relying on me next year to come through. Because the whole idea of coming here was, um, you know, my, my favourite trainer is Emmanuel Stewart. Um, and, you know, we wanted to have a similar system to what he had. He had really good amateurs. Mm -hmm. At one point I know he had Tony, um, you know, he had um, Hearns. Yes. Milton McCrory was there, I think. I, he's had too many down there. Um, and that's, I like the idea of that. He had them as amateurs and then he turned them pros. Yes. That's what I wanted. Fantastic, fantastic. Uh, and just a quick on your, your relationship with Steve Goodwin. It's really, really good. Uh, it's Don Charles, um, who's my mentor. Um, you know, he, he knows I look, look after things down here, you know, technically. Um, but if it, on the business side, um, you know, he's, I speak to him or Steve. Um, all my fighters are, are signed through Steve Goodwin. They're promoted and managed through, through Steve, so that makes it a lot easier for me. I've only got to go to one person. Um, he's really reliable, he's honest. Um, you know, if a fighter does pull out like an opponent, you know, he finds a replacement. Um, he sh I think at the moment he's, he has the best shows and the most regular um, shows at the moment. So that's really good for my boxers, so at least they do get up, they to go out four, five, six times a year. And um, yeah, we, me and Steve, we speak every week, so we've got a really good relationship. Fantastic. So yeah, thank you so much for talking to BW Team Sports. Fantastic. It's, been a, it's been a real pleasure talking to the man of IQ Boxing. This is us, take care.